If you're looking to start a pressure washing business and you want to have the most professional setup as possible, make sure you watch this video till the end. We are going to go over a tool that we uh, can't live without in this industry towards the end of this video, so make sure you stick around for that. I had a comment a couple of days ago on my last video whenever we were building out the blend manifolds. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Before we get into that, if you're struggling to land jobs right now or you're not happy with the types of jobs you're landing as far as like the payout of the job, go check out the first link in the comment section and the description. That'll be a link to Local Domination 2 where I will show you how to set up your business on Google and show you how to run your ads so that you can pick up the majority of the leads in your area and get the phone calls coming in, the lead forms coming in, and you're able to pick up those bigger jobs, better jobs, commercial, residential, whatever it may be. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. I'm gonna be walking you through exactly how to go from your hose reel, if you are running a half inch hose reel, um, like one of the standard industry standard hose reels, like one of these over here. The connection on those hose reels is half inch, so, if you're hooking up the pressure side of things, you're gonna need a jumper hose, which is like one of these uh, six or 12 foot hoses right here. You would run a jumper hose from your hose reel to your pressure washer, and whether it be a female or a male quick connect that's coming off of your pressure washer, you would either put a male like this, a male plug, or a female such as this one right here on the opposite end of your hose, and then just attach it to the quick connect on your pressure washer. That's how you would run from your pressure washer to your hose reel. Now I'm about to get in how you would run from your hose reel all the way out to the end of your hose and show you how you can have the ability to be able to um, cut the water off, attach different things such as guns, wands, surface cleaners, whatever you may need without actually having to kill your pressure washer or sitting there trying to operate the quick connects and you got O-rings blowing out because that water is constantly coming out of the end of your hose. So, Let's get started with how you're actually going to attach this hose to your half inch hose reel. What you're gonna need is a stainless steel reducer, just like this one right here. All it is is a half inch OD, and then there's a 3 8 ID inside of there. So you're gonna take the 3 8 side, and obviously you're gonna Teflon everything that we're about to talk about in this video. You're gonna Teflon everything. I'm just not gonna Teflon it because this is stuff that I have pulled off the shelf from behind me, and it's stuff that we still have for sale in the store. So I'm not gonna Teflon everything, but I am gonna show you how to go from the end of your hose after you get it on your hose reel to the point where you're able to make those different attachments depending on what you need to do. So to go into your hose reel, the half inch connection on the hose reel, you're gonna take this 3 8 ID side of this reducer and screw it onto your pressure hose like that. And then basically all you're gonna do is now you have uh, increase the size of the OD of this to be able to screw this half inch side into, into the half inch connection on the actual hose reel itself. So after you get that screwed on, and it can be a pain in the butt because these ends of this hose, these hoses are crimped on here. Some of them have swivels, some of them do not. These don't come with swivels. These aren't, um, these don't have the ability to swivel, but I am gonna give you a different option while you're working in case your hose does not have swivels. So the easiest thing that we have found is just to stretch the hose all the way out. Um, that way it's not rolled up anymore and you don't have any loops in it or anything like that whenever you're actually trying to screw this on. And if you have two people, it makes it a lot easier because one person can stand right behind the other guy that's trying to screw the hose in to the hose reel and you just turn the hose until you get it tight, and then you can take a pair of channel locks or a crescent wrench or whatever you need and actually tighten the fitting up into the hose reel. So you wanna make sure that's tight, make sure everything is wrapped in Teflon whenever you go to do it, that way you don't have any leaks. After you do that, so this end's connected to your hose reel, the other end of your hose is going to look the same exact way that the other end did before we screwed the reducer onto it. So you're gonna Teflon this right here and then after you do that, we run, the way we do this is, is we have a ball valve and we actually use our ball valve to rinse and stuff like that. So we rinse with our ball valve through the plug in like this. So pretty much all your wands, uh, especially like your Simpsons and stuff like that from Lowe's, the one that actually comes in the box a lot of times will have a male end um, just like this on that on that actual wand. So what you need to do is just unscrew that 
and then put you a female 3 8 like this, 3 8 female MPT quick connect on the end of that gun like this. Imagine this is a pressure washing gun. This is, that's all this is, is just without a lance. So it's the same thing. So you would just screw that MPT quick connect onto the end of your gun like that. And then you would take the end of your ball valve, whichever end, it doesn't really matter. They're both the same size. And this is just a DN10 ball valve. This is what we recommend running. Um, a lot of guys run these. This is pretty much the industry standard whenever it comes to ball valves. Screw your plug, your 3 8 plug into one end of your ball valve. And then you take another 3 8 MPT quick connect, just like we put on the bottom of our gun. And you would screw that into the opposite side of your ball valve, like that. So you have your ball valve. It looks just like this on either side. You have a male end coming out of this end, female quick connect in on this, and then your ball valve is good to go. No, no need to touch that for now. And then your FPT plug is going to go on the end of your hose that is hanging off of your hose reel. So at the end of your hose, you're gonna put that FPT 3 8 plug and then your hose is ready to go. What you're gonna do from there is that female, that um, MPT quick connect, which is just the male to female quick connect. Then you're able to quick connect that onto the end of your hose. So it's just that simple. Now you have a ball valve on the end of your hose and there's a bunch of different things that you can do with these. This is probably my most favorite and our most utilized tool on the truck. This is a complete game changer if you don't already run one of these or if you didn't have the knowledge to be able to set one up, it's very simple. Obviously the ball valve, whenever it's turned on, is in line. This black handle is in line with your hose and the valve. So that means your water's flowing, so water's just gonna run. And then whenever you cut this ball valve off, like that, to where it's out of line with your hose, then it stops the flow of the water. Now, if you're not running a bypass on your pressure washer, I do not recommend leaving this closed for very long because you will just build up pressure and you will start blowing hoses and O-rings and a bunch of different stuff. But if you are running a bypass, you can pretty much shut this off and your bypass is set up correctly, whether it be going back to your water tank, if you're pulling from a water tank or just bypassing straight through the pump itself, you should be good to leave this open or closed, I mean, and just let it run but there's really no reason to, especially if you are not pulling from a buffer tank, because if you're pulling from, from a house, whether you're running like a three and a half or a four gallon a minute machine, and it's hooked up to a hose pipe, ran to the customer's house or your house, whatever it may be, then you should be good just to leave it open unless you need to put a different attachment on the end of this. Now, the reason we set it up like this with the female side on the hose, with the um, MPT plug coming out of the other end is because this this MPT plug doesn't have an O-ring in it like these do, like these, um, like these female ends. There's actually a little small black O-ring in there. I don't know if you can see that. You can cut this off and if you slowly crack it open, it creates some pressure behind it to where you're able to rinse concrete or houses. We do a lot of house washes with just the ball valve. That's why we love them so much because we keep them on the end of our hoses that are on the trailer or the truck and we're able to rinse basically a whole job with just this ball valve. You can crack it back to the point where it's got a soft enough stream to be able to water plants, rent a house, whether it's um, vinyl, hardy plank, uh, stucco, brick, you can crack it back to where you're putting out enough pressure to actually clean brick without having to go back and grab the wine. It may not always clean up as good as a wine does. If there's hard algae spots, you may still need to go get the wine or hit it with chemical again, but for the most part, this is your best friend on every single job you'll go on if you do not have one of these set up on your hose already. There's a lot of different variations that you can make with this. Um, like I said, you can swap these. You can put the female side on the top to where that's where your um, connection is for your either surface cleaner or uh, your mini gun, which is like this. We call this a mini gun because all it is is just a wand without a lance on the end of it, which is really good for rinsing, reaching them higher, uh, higher spots if you're struggling to reach those. Back to this, you could, put, you could put this female up here and this male end down here, you can just recreate it to where it's hooked up that way. 
there's actual swivels that they make for these. So if you don't have that swivel crimp on your hose, what you can do with this is take that off and basically all you're gonna do is you're gonna remove your, your MPT female quick connect from the bottom, put that to the side. You're gonna take this ball valve swivel and all it is is just a, a swivel piece and it's a 3 8 uh, male end. So that's gonna go into the female end of your ball valve on the opposite end of your MPT plug like that. And then this side is a female end. And all you're gonna do with that is you're gonna take your 3 8 MPT female quick connect like this and screw it into the opposite side of that swivel. So whenever you hook this up to your male end on your hose like that, you're able to swivel your ball valve around. That way if the hose starts getting twisted up or anything like that, you don't have to worry about untwisting the actual ball valve itself. It's just gonna swivel the whole time and it makes life a lot easier. But the only thing about these is, is that it does create some weight on the end of these, but we don't really run them on ours just because of how heavy it does make them. We'd rather just, you know, if we gotta untwist the ball valve a couple times to be able to um, untwist the hose, if it's pulling against us or something like that, it's not really that big of a deal. And these are pretty expensive for what they are. This is about $50, just this swivel piece. Um, just this piece right here is about $50. So it's kind of, a, kind of a preference. If you would rather run one with that, then by all means go ahead. We don't run one, like I said, we just deal with it. If the hose starts getting twisted up, we just untwist the ball valve and it's not a big deal. But if you are, going to run this just like this, like we had it set up in the beginning, then you definitely will not be disappointed. Male plug on one end, that's the end that your water is actually gonna come out of and you're gonna be able to rinse with. And then your female end on the opposite side that is just going to quick connect on to the FPT plug you have on the end of your hose, like so. So whenever it comes to actually swapping out accessories, surface cleaners, guns, wands, whatever it may be, all you're gonna do with this gun, and this is the same thing as if it were a wand with a lance or a surface cleaner, whatever it may be, you need to make sure that you have that FPT female plug or female uh, quick connect on the end of that attachment. That way it's able to just quick connect in into that male side of your ball valve like that. And then with this, with this, this is what we use. There's been a lot of videos that we've made where people are asking how we're able to rinse that high and different things like that. And that's all that is, is just one of these guns and it could be a general pump gun like this one or ST1500, doesn't really matter. They all have the same connection to them. This is a quarter inch uh, connection, and I'll show you how to set that up in a second. This is just a 3 8 in with that um, MPT female quick connect on the bottom side of it. So once you get that set up, and just disconnect this, make it a little easier from the ball valve. Still got that on the bottom of it. Make sure it's Teflon'd in. And then what you're gonna do is, you're gonna take a quarter inch quick connect MPT. Looks just like the 3 8 MPT, it's just a smaller size size down from the 3 8 And all the sizes that you're really ever gonna need is unless you are running a half inch pressure hose, which can be very heavy, but most of them should be 3 8 All you're ever really gonna need is 3 8 and quarter inch connections. Do recommend running stainless, especially if you are doing downstreaming or something like that. We don't run any chemical through our guns like this just because of the brass ends on them. And we do run the GP guns like this one. So what you're gonna do is you got your 3 8 on this side, and you're going to take that quarter inch MPT quick connect and put it at the top of the gun like that. So you have female end on this side for your ball valve, female end on this side for your J-Rod. And that's all we run on these. And it's very simple. We only run two tips on our J-Rods for these. We actually break these J-Rods in half to where we can create uh, two separate pieces because we don't, have, we don't ever run a different size fan or a different size stream or anything like that because we don't downstream. We just use these to rinse. Um, 
we necessarily don't even really need the fan because we don't ever use it. We always just use the stream. Stream tip, basically what you're able to do is just take that J-Rod, put it into whatever slot it needs to be in, and there you go. Now you got your stream tip here. Fan tip if you want to, you can put a different size fan tip, different size stream tip. These are two different size stream tips that are on here. You can see there at the top and at the bottom of the J-Rod. Normally on our eight gallon a minute on the trailer, we'll run a double zero 30 stream tip. And all it is is just a bigger orifice. So it's able to create more of a stream coming out of the end of the tip on the J-Rod. And then on our five gallon a minute or five and a half gallon a minute on the truck, we'll run a double zero uh, 20, which is just a step down from the 30. You can see this top one is slightly bigger. The orifice size on it is slightly bigger than the bottom one and you're able to get a way better stream out of those bigger orifice size tips whenever it comes to uh, pulling more gallon per minute through your pressure washer. So works great for us. This is all we've ever really used. If you need that extension, all you would do um, is take your regular wand and with your lance and you can screw this. It should come with one of these. Let's grab one. This wand's already set up. But basically, it's gonna be a FPT quick connect on the ends of your wands like this because this lance actually is a male end, obviously, because it's just a straight piece of metal. So you're gonna take a FPT quick connect like this, except it's gonna be quarter inch. This one's three eighths. This is quarter inch on the end of your wand. And it's the same thing. Then you could take your J rod. If you need that extra reach, which we don't really find you get a crazy amount of more reach. You really only get however long the lance is. That's the amount of reach that you're gonna um, achieve whenever you do include a lance. This is a three foot lance. So it does help for those higher to reach places, if, especially if you're running the right tips um, on your J-Rod for these types of things. This is just a lot lighter and a lot more convenient to use for us. So that's why we like running these. But uh, if it's something lower to the ground, we won't even use these or the wands with the J-Rod to rinse. We'll crack open these, crack these ball valves a little bit and it starts pulling a good bit of pressure. The more you crack it, the more pressure it's gonna put, or the more you open it, the less pressure you're gonna put out. And you can actually use this for pretty much anything. Like I said, we water plants with these. Um, we rinse houses, you can clean brick, you can rinse concrete off. This is what we use. Every single day, this is the one tool that I can guarantee you on any job, we're definitely gonna use this. Even our striping jobs, we use it to wash all of our paint um, out of our buckets and off of our machine and different things like that. Off of the truck at the end of jobs, we use this for everything. This is a uh, definite game changer. If you have not set one of these up yet, I highly recommend going to set one up. They can be pretty, pretty expensive. Just for the ball valve without the quick connect, we sell them for around 50 bucks but it is definitely worth it if you don't have one already. Cutting this off and being able to attach anything within seconds that you want, open that back up and then you're ready to go to work and cut that off. That one doesn't have, this doesn't have a quick connect on the end of it, but if it had a, a 3 8 quick connect, you'd be able to just connect that straight onto there just like that, just like we did with the gun and then you open that back up and you're ready to go. So it's really a preference um, as far as if you want the swivel or not and what type of end you wanna run, whether it be a J-Rod. We recommend the J-Rods just because they're the, the easiest for us. We do split the, the four piece J-Rods in half, make them a two slotted J-Rod with a fan tip in case we ever need it and the right size stream tip. Unless you're, like I said, unless you're downstreaming or something like that. Rarely ever gonna use the fan tip, if you just, especially if you're just using it to rinse with. Um, we don't ever use the fan tip on ours, but we just have it there just in case we ever do need it or in case we ever do decide to downstream or anything like that. So that's pretty much it whenever it comes to setting up everything from your pressure washer into your reel. If you are running like a Lowe's pressure washer or something like that, and it comes with one of these MPT plugs, screwed into that, like that. If it looks like that out of the box, 
All you gotta do is just unscrew this out of there. And some of them like the electric pressure washers and things like that don't actually come with a fitting that's screwed in there. Um, I do believe the Simpsons and maybe the DeWalt ones from Home Depot do come with um, a removable plug like this. And then you would just take a MPT quick connect, female quick connect like that, and then just replace that plug and put that plug into the end of your ball valve and put the attack, put the quick connects, uh, the correct quick connects on your hose and on the other side of your ball valve and you're ready to go. So easy enough, some great stuff here. We use it every single day on every single job, just about, especially the ball valve. We definitely use that every single day. The mini gun for those higher, uh, higher to reach areas, definitely a great game changer for knocking down wasp nest or dirt dauber's nest, whatever it may be. Um, so if you want to look into that, it's another great option to add to your arsenal. But that's pretty much going to wrap up this video. Y'all go check out the links in the comment section and the description. My name is Jacob, and until next time, y'all stay happy, humble, and money hungry. Good morning.